Okay, so I was going through my collection the other day and I find these two quartz fiber uh, dosimeter chargers. And what's interesting about them is uh, they are both Mark IIs, but as you can see from the front, uh, this says Mark II with the number two. And this version says Mark II with Roman numerals. Um, so they are essentially exactly the same, but I am guessing there is a few internal changes. So we're gonna pop the top, tops off them and have a look. Now, uh, as I said, these are magneto charging units. So there is a handle on the side. You would put the dosimeter in and you would turn the handle, the dosimeter would go in the top here, in that hole. And uh, that would charge the quartz fiber dosimeter. Uh, now, the way these work is you charge them up uh, inside there is an air filled sealed cylinder ionization chamber and at one end there is essentially a microscope and at the other end there is a little charging pin so inside there is an electrode strip and that's connected to the charging pin and it goes all the way up the top to the microscope where there is a gold plated quartz fibre and when you look through the microscope end, there is a scale and you can actually see the quartz fibre at the top inside the scale. And that's obviously what gives you your measurement. And as the radiation attacks this, it, the scale gets larger. So it's essentially as it's decharging, it uh, is giving you your scale. So I have three different types here. Uh, this one is the oldest and that is zero to five Ronkin. And that was known as a training dosimeter. Then I have the red band one, which is zero to 50 Ronkin. And then I have this one here, which was known as the war, wartime dosimeter, and that's zero to 150 Ronkin. Now, they would all come in these metal tins. So there was a tin of five then, that was your training one for your uh, monitoring post crew in civil defense. They came in packs of five. Then you had your blue one here, and then you had your, your purple one here, and you can see. July 1982 on the top. Now I have quite a few of these actually. I managed to get a box of these. Uh, one of my videos on my channel is of the Balamina Regional Government Headquarters bunker. It's a fly around with a drone. And uh, I was very lucky when I first opened my museum that they allowed me inside to uh, remove a few items from my displays. And I was able to get a box of I think a hundred of these. So uh, I've still got a few left. <laughs> anyway, I sometimes hand them out at open desk. But um, what we'll do now is we'll pop the cover off these and uh, I'll let you see inside. So quick jump cut. Okay, so I've done one. Uh, this one dates from 1960 and that's the Mark II uh, with the number two. And then this one here is the Mark II with Roman numerals and it dates from 1958. So this is the older of the two here. So to undo them, you undo these feet at the bottom and this is, this is wood and this is metal. And then you unwind this handle until it comes out. Put that there so I can split the two. And then once you pull the rubber bung out, the top lifts off. So as I said, uh, this one is the older one on this side, and this is the newer one here. So immediately you can see that the magneto unit itself on the newer one is bigger. So there'll be more electrostatic charge from this one. Turn it around. We have a large resistor capacitor here uh, and that is for um, when you charge the magneto it's storing up a large amount of electricity. So you'd be about 200 volts will be coming out of this at full charge and then going in so you can see where the when you put the dosimeter in the top. In fact I'll do that just so you can see. So the dosimeter goes in the top there and the pin, the center pin of the dosimeter touches this pin here and then we have the earth here yes it's quite interesting and then we have you can see here we have got the charge decharge switch here and what these suffered from uh, is when you were charging them when you stop charging there'll be a little jump and sometimes the meter would jump off zero. So you get it perfectly on zero and then it would jump off. So what we might find here is with this older unit here, when they swap to the newer style uh, with the larger uh, magneto box here, and we've got more modern capacitors here. This unit here, resistor capacitor is exactly the same. 
Uh, yeah, there's a few little differences, but what they may well have done is they may have tried to get rid of that jump. But yeah, a few subtle differences, and I think what's interesting about these is as well, that's uh, how you would have got the light. If in fact, you can probably see the reflection there. Uh, that's actually the reflection you're seeing is the bottom of the, if I put my hand over the top, you can see that's me waving my hand over the top. And you can see the charging pin there. And uh, you would use that mirror then with a light source, either a candle or uh, a torch uh, shone into there, or if you're above ground, uh, then you would use sunlight as well. But yeah, we'll swap away from these two now and uh, I'll show you the more modern battery operated ones. So another quick jump cut. Okay, I've got the two more modern examples now, and these were ones that were powered from uh, D-cell batteries. Uh, they work pretty much exactly the same way. It builds an electrostatic charge inside through a capacitor, which is released then into the charging pin. And again, if I open up the little plug there, you can see the little charging pin in the center, and the same with the, uh, the Stephen one here. Uh, this version would have been used by Civil Defence and Ministry of Defence uh, with Army, Navy and Air Force. Uh, this version was used by the Royal Observer Corps. The uh, Royal Observer Corps did not use this. So if you are out there looking for the proper decimeter uh, charger for the Royal Observer Corps, um, this is the right type. Uh, again, as I said, they work the same way. And what I'll do is I will take the bottom off this. the inside and in them you get a spare bulb and that's one of the good things about them is that they uh, it has a bulb now instead of uh, a mirror so you can see there's a eerie 500 volt capacitor there and by turning the little rheostat in there for changing the voltage. So when you put the, uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put this red one in and you can see the bulb coming on. So as you push down on the uh, dosimeter, that bulb comes on and then that lets you see up through inside into the little microscope, as it said. So as you push down on that, that is applying charge into the dosimeter to zero it. And in fact, I'll test this quickly. And yes, it has been zeroed. That one has been zeroed. Um, and the uh, and when I say zeroed, I mean there is a charge applied to it. So when I'm doing that, I'm just looking. If I was to push down so that there was a high-pitched noise, that would be applying charge to it. And it would uh, it would get rid of the read inside until I started uh, turning the uh, the zero knob here, and then I'll take off the bottom of the Stephen one as well, so you can have a look at it. And this one actually came from Irish Civil Defence. Uh, this was something else that they gave to me when I was down to visit them about uh, about two years ago now, down at their uh, training college down in Dublin. see works almost exactly the same way we've got a bulb we've got a space here for a d-cell battery and then you see a nice block of resin here with all the uh, electronics safe inside so it's actually probably a neater if I show the two side by side they are probably slighter and slightly neater this one but yeah again works exactly the same way press the uh, Put that on, press down to apply the charge and then turn the button here to zero it. But yeah, they're they're lovely little units and I mean, I, I do have quite a few of the, as I said, I have quite a few of these uh, later style ones uh, that go to 150 Ronkin and I uh, do charge them periodically just to see how long they keep a charge for. And I found that these ones from 1983 just seem to hold their charge in uh, perpetuity, which is pretty good. Uh, the blue one, doesn't seem to hold its charge at all, a couple of days and it's and it's gone. But uh, yeah, these ones are quite handy. And again, as I said, dosimeter is for showing your accumulated dose. So the observers down inside the monitoring posts and civil defense personnel and military personnel would have worn one of these. 
and uh, it would have shown their accumulated dose of radiation whilst, whilst they're in the post. Now they do work reasonably well. Um, their accuracy level is about 15%, which, you know, sounds pretty terrible. And uh, they have a small range, obviously going to 150 Ronkin. So if, if you are subjected to a really large dose of radiation in a short period of time, it would just max this out straight away. So it'd be quite difficult to know exactly, you know, how much you've been exposed to. Uh, obviously lower levels of radiation as it creeps up slightly over a 12 or 24 hour period, you're able to work out a little bit better what level you're getting. But uh, yeah, hopefully you find that interesting and uh, you're able to see what the inside of these devices look like. And um, I'll, uh, I'll put up a short video that I made of one being charged and I was charging it with the newer style uh, Mark II number two. So it was uh, this one here I was charging it with and it's quite hard to get right because you have to really, really, really turn this handle to build up the charge and, uh, and then hit the the charge button on the side and you just have to get it just right and luckily when I did it I uh, didn't get any kickback on it and it worked perfectly but uh, yeah so hopefully you enjoyed that video and uh, I'll be back with more soon but as always thank you very very much for watching and I'll see you again bye bye